Okay, my name is Russell Stannard and this is teachertraininvideos.com and this set of training videos is going to show you how to use Google Forms in some really special ways. Now whenever I present Google Forms at workshops or presentations, teachers are really surprised what Google Forms can do. And in this set of videos I'm going to show you how you can add videos into Google Forms and then create questions at the answers, questions that the students answer. But even more important, you can branch. So if a student answers a, then it goes to one question, if, you, if the student answers B, it goes to a different question, etc, etc. And also ways of providing feedback to the students as they're working through uh, the different branches of the questions. Really useful for teaching, really useful in nearly all teaching situations and of course the Google products are all free. I'll also show you the types of information that the summary information, the statistics that Google Forms can produce. So let's get straight into these videos and it's a really useful set of training videos for anyone that doesn't know about Google Forms and doesn't know how you can create these branches which is very very simple just before we start, a couple of really important things. Firstly, please sign up to the teachertrainingvideos.com newsletter, which has probably got around 20,000 subscribers now. And also, don't forget that when you watch any of the videos, you can go full screen. So, for example, if I come down here and click on a set of videos to really benefit from seeing them, when you open up the video player, just move down here and you can click on this button here and it will take you to full screen you can see the videos much much clearer when you go full screen and of course you can click back as well so please make sure you use of the full screen it really does improve the quality of the, of the experience and also don't forget you can jump to any part of the videos by simply clicking on the menu system below the videos Okay, so this is the advanced set of Google Forms, and as I've just said, we're going to be looking at videos and pictures and doing mazes and branches of uh, answers. In other words, if you answer the question, a particular question, you move to a different answer depending on what question you wrote um, or what answer you put. Now, the um, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Google Forms, just click on teachertrainingvideos.com and look for the website, the section on Google. Uh, this website is going to be updated very soon, but you'll see at the top there will be a Google section. Click there and you'll find Google Forms there. Okay, so let's get straight in. What we're going to do first of all is click here and open up Google Drive because obviously it's in the drive where we create and save all our forms. And we're going to click here on Create and choose a form and the first thing it always does is ask you for a title now you can always change your title at any time so I'm going to call this video form 2 video form 2 and then you're going to choose any of these different templates that we want to we can make use of um, so I'm going to use this one here click on OK just a little reminder if ever you do want to change the name of the uh, form that you've created just click here and you can write the name again right let's get straight in and start looking at how we can add video first into our form when you come to your first question then it doesn't look like if you click down here on your options of question types that you've actually got the option to add video but however there's a couple of things you can do one thing you can do is just click on this edit button here and if you do that it allows you to add an item and what we're going to do here is we're going to add a video and then we're going to delete this top part because what we're going to do is we're going to actually have the video as the opening part by default the first question is kind of set up for you so watch this I'm just going to add some video so click on add and then click on video and I'm going to find the video now I can either put the URL of the video in or just search for a video so I'm going to write funny video and see what comes up on the screen Okay, and I'm going to just grab the first one, click on that, I can watch the video and if I'm happy with it, I just click on select and it will now be placed into the screen. So now we've got a video at the top, but we've still got that default question that was set up. So just delete that and now what you've got now is a uh, question right at the top of the screen, okay, uh, which is a video, in fact, sorry, I've got two there, I don't know how I managed that, sorry, I'm going to delete that one as well. 
uh, delete that as well so now I've just got the video at the top of the screen and I can add in a description and then I can start to add my questions underneath okay so that's one of the quickest ways of very quickly getting a video at the top of the screen I'm going to show you another way okay so let's delete that and if you want to delete a form the quickest way is just click on file and go move to bin and it immediately moves it to bin. I'm going to go back to drive so that one's been put to the bin and we're going to create another one which we can give the same name it won't matter now because we've already deleted that one so click on form and we're going to call this video form 2 again so we'll just go through the whole same process I'm just going to show you a different way to get video form 2 at the top of your screen which in a lot of cases you may want to do the students watch a video and then answer some questions of course you can place videos through the whole project and what we're going to do again we've got this default question that is immediately set up by Google Forms and I showed you one way of adding a video by just simply clicking on edit another way of really quickly adding a video is just to simply click, click on here insert video and again we come onto the video page I'll do a uh, quick search let's see if I can find a video that I'm in so if I just click here and come down here I've got one here I'm just going to click on that place that into the screen select it so that video is added now the same thing again notice that we've already got that default question there at the top I'm just going to delete that and now I'm ready now it would be a good idea to put a description here a watch uh, video lesson watch this video and answer the questions okay so that's just one way of really getting um, your video at the top of the screen and that may be something that you want to do we can add video at lots of other places as well we're going to start looking at that in a moment what we do is though we'll build this up a little bit and add a few questions to it just to see how you could work with video and then add in additional questions um, to check comprehension etc now what we're going to do is just simply add a question to go underneath this video just to sort of remind you how you can do that so you've already got the video that obviously the students are going to watch and then they're going to answer the questions below so this is going to be the first question we're going to do a multiple choice so we click on multiple choice and we can put the question in uh, so let's put for example which question uh, which country yeah sorry is this talk taking place in so I put the question onto the screen I can put a tip or help for the for the uh, users the participants if I want to and I'm just going to put a few options here so I'll put USA Russia and we'll put India now we can move those around as well if you want to put them into a different order you can always do that so what obviously to keep in mind is is that and you can obviously add additional ones here if you want to do that as well is that um, you 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 know what will happen is it will basically collect the data of how many students say India, how many students say Russia, and how many students say USA. So you don't actually have to put the answers. Now one of the things you might notice here it says go to page based on answer, and this is where you can start to branch and encourage students to go off and do look at different pieces of information. So let's create another question but this time the second this next one we're going to look at how we can branch our question so that depending on the answer you put you will move off to a different answer so let's look at that next now what I've done is I've jumped ahead of myself a little bit because I wanted to show you what I've created and then take you through what it is we've got this video here at the beginning and then what I've done now is I've added a very simple question that just simply says which country is this talk taking place in the users can choose either India Russia or USA and depending on their choice it will jump to a different page now I've already produced those uh, three pages so um, in fact sorry I just want to delete that it shouldn't be there I think that was in my practice sorry so the first page is Russia and the second page is India and the third page is USA okay so very simple um, I have just simply allowed the user once they answer that question to go to a question let me show you how that would work so it will depending on what answer you choose it will take you to a particular answer so I've clicked on live view to see exactly what we've produced and just let's see what happens so there's only one question I'm going to click on Russia I click on continue and then it then takes me to that particular page 
where I then have to put in my answer to that question and so now I would answer this question if I go back again just to show you if I put a different answer in uh, let's imagine that I chose USA and click then I have to click on continue it's going to take me to this question here so this is a branching system and it's very very easy to do there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the way that I do it and um, you know, it really does take a little bit of planning but it's very very easy to do and of course it can really make for interesting forms uh, that are great for discussions if you wanted to do a kind of maze situation with various options it can take quite a while to do but very very powerful if you do produce one now I'm going to take you through the process of doing this and a couple of things it really doesn't matter whether you produce the extra pages first and then go back and produce the question that the, 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 the answers branch to or whether you simply produce the question and then produce the three additional pages the great thing about working with Google Forms is that you can go back and edit anything at any time and so I'm going to sort of take you through this whole process of how to do this um, I'm going to produce a question and then I'm going to produce three possible branches that uh, the user can go to depending on what answer they put in. So let me just take you through this process and then you'll see the potential of how it can work. So to make life easy what we're going to do is we'll actually start a new form um, just because uh, then I've got to reproduce all the questions and the pages right from the start. So I'll do what I've done before and that is I'll go to file and just simply move the bin and then back to drive so that's been completely deleted and we're going to create a new form to save time I'll quickly add in the video now before we start and then let's get down and begin to look at how we can create these branches okay so we've got a new video on the screen and I've retitled this one's going to be called video branch activity we've got the video up now we're going to start to add our questions and I'm going to do the multiple choice question first I'm just going to click here and I'll come back to it later what country was this presentation given in that's the question I'm going to offer three options it's going to be India it's going to be Russia or it's going to be USA okay and I'm leaving it there I'm, I'm not going to at the moment do anything about branching off to a question and when I click on this button here it then says to me right where do, where do you want this uh, person to go if they answer India and I've got to choose now at the moment I haven't got any pages so there's no point in really doing that at the moment so I'm going to turn that off and what I'm going to now do is start to produce new pages and then I will link those pages to the possible answers that the user has given so first of all, thing we need to do is to obviously add a new item what we're going to do this time is add a page break and so I'm just going to uh, give this page a title and we will call this one India and description answer the question okay so we've just added a page break we haven't actually added any particular content into that page so I'm going to do that now by adding a multiple choice question uh, based on India that says what is the capital of India and we'll give couple of options just to make it really quick so I'm going to put Dell E and um, let's put Mumbai I think that's how you spell it okay now I'm going to click on done going to now add another so we've added that as a now we're going to need another page break okay so again come back here add item and again this can be a page break and we're going to call this one USA same thing just quick description um, this is all about the USA well, it's not really it's only going to be a simple question but it's just to show you what happens add a question to that page so it will go on the same page but we'll do it multiple choice again and we'll say what is the capital of the USA just put in a couple of examples just to really quickly do this so put New York and Washington DC okay so that's that one done again gonna click on the done button so we've added that and we'll do one more and that's gonna be again coming back to the top here we're gonna um, sorry let's just 
it doesn't actually matter where you add the question anyway to be honest with you so I'm going to add it from here page break and this one will be the third option which is Russia so all about Russia let's call that so all about Russia I'm going to put here please answer the question and now I'm going to add the question okay this is obviously all additional information don't have to put stuff in there if you don't want to click on multiple choice so I'm adding a question to go on the Russia page so each time we're creating the page and then adding a question to go underneath so when we create the page it's just simply basically the open information at the top of that page now we're gonna say again what is the capital of Russia question mark and we'll offer two ones here We'll put uh, Omsk and we're going to put Moscow. That's it. And again, I'm going to click on Done. Now, what I'm going to do now is come back to the original piece uh, question that we set and we're going to link this question now to the pages so that when you answer the question, you move to a specific page. As I've said before, one of the things I really like is the flexibility with which uh, Google Forms works. So all I need to do is move back to that question on Google Forms, click on Edit. I'm going to change that now to link it to an answer. And now what I'm going to do is say, if the student answers India, we'll send them to the India page. If the student answers Russia, we'll send them to the Russia page. If the student answers USA, we'll send them to the USA page. That's why it's a good idea to make sure you title your pages. It's easy to do. And that is now all done. I'm going to click on done there. Now I'm going to actually watch this. And I can do that by going to live view live form. And we can actually view what we've created. Okay, just a reminder as well that whenever you do do that editing, so when you click on that button and, and we do that, make sure you click on done so that it does update. Um, I know it tells you always Google tells you that they automatically update things but I think it's just a good tip occasionally for some reason it may be there may be an answer to why that happens I've done something and then so when I've gone to check it doesn't seem to be there so I'm always a, a fan of clicking on the button like that if there's one around anyway actually we're going to need to click on it again now and what we're going to do is view the form click on here view form live there's the video and we've got a question here I'm, I'm going to choose India and I'm going to click continue and now it takes me to the Indian question so it's India answer the question what is the capital Delhi sorry I forgot to put the question mark in I was rushing to do this and then uh, click on here and then I would submit now if the questionnaire carried on and we're going to look at this in a minute what's going to happen okay if I click back so let me just um, go back again anyway just to point out something again if we took another option okay uh, USA continue and back again uh, this is all about the USA what is the capital of the USA sorry forgot to put the question again da, 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 put your answer okay so you can note this is the page information and you didn't have to put in a definition if you didn't want to and then this here was the specific question of course there could be more than one question uh, the USA could have had 10 questions Russia could have had 10 questions etc but you get the basic idea so let's extend a little bit what we've done here at the moment what we've got is simply that they go to a page and when they get to that page um, we have just got one question on it and the pages are a bit inconsistent because this one says all about Russia this one says just USA and this one says uh, India so we could sort of change the titles and the first thing I'm going to do so I'm going to tidy all this up and I'm just going to change this one to Russia so they've all got the same title and that they've all got the same instructions which please answer the question so I'm going to copy that control copy okay click on done because I've done that one now going to come down to the next one uh, and again I'm going to just do a quick edit and just make sure we've got a nice consistent layout of the three pages so they're all the same click on done and the third one the same thing India um, in fact it's more or less just the right thing anyway but we'll do it so we're just going to click again on that there and again just click and put that in now the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add more questions to each page so let's just start with India and we're going to just add an additional item so instead of having one question to answer we're going to uh, have a second question to answer and of course it doesn't have to be um, 
uh, a multiple choice it could be tick boxes it could be choose from a list so we'll try choose from a list just as a simple exercise you can refer back to the first set of videos I made uh, if you want to look at this so I'm going to add in a second question here um, where what region of India is Mumbai situated okay so that's the question that I'm going to answer and then I'm going to add some possible answers to that question so Mumbai is in West India in I think it's called Maharashtra if I'm pronouncing it correctly we'll just put in a couple of examples let's put East India and okay so we're just adding in an additional question here South India okay so we just added an additional question click on the done button so I just want to show you what that would mean then just to make this point and we're going to start to make this even a little bit more comp complicated um, so we've now got two questions on the page for if we now view from live form and we chose ob obviously the India answer and click on continue you'll now see that there are two questions on the page that need to be submitted so we would choose uh, Mumbai or Delhi in, in fact in the first one and then choose from a drop down list here and say West India and then submit now we could have more branching so we could ha even add a question to this India one that then branched off to something else and then we kind of another layer of branching so let's just have a look at doing that as well just to see the levels of complexity that we can start to develop within our questions so we're going to edit this form so we're going to click here another way to just very quickly get back to the editing stages we're going to come down and we'll go to the work with the Indian one again rather than look at the other ones come to this page what I love about this again so easy to edit just click on this button here and we're going to add in another layer now of um, complexity in terms of adding an item okay and we'll do multiple choice Let, let's do a different one actually so we let's try tick box one so there's tick boxes and we're gonna add here uh, how big is the population of Mumbai okay this is obviously the statistics that are um, provided and I'm gonna now add in three possibilities that they can choose on choose from now according to um, so sorry, I've just that was it. The question, according to uh, Wikipedia, the uh, city population is around 18 million. So we're going to put in an option here. We'll put around 18 million, around 18 million, and apparently the surrounding area has an additional 20 million people. And let's just put around 5 million, and then the last one could be around. 50 million and just to make a bit more precise I'm going to put here what how big is the population of Mumbai how, how is the city population so just to make that explicit now again I'm not going to put any text help in we've put this question in in terms of um, the three options that we've got and you might notice straight away uh, that there's a problem uh, and that is that this one at the moment we've got no actual option to jump off to another question so let's just change that to a different type of question. We'll do multiple choice. Does multiple choice? Yes, it does. So that's something I've just discovered as we've been doing this. Not all options allow you the chance to jump off and go to another question. Let's just have a look at other ones. So let's see if we do, for example, I think we've just done check boxes. Um, choose from a list. So yes, choose from a list does work okay and we're gonna choose that okay so we can do either multiple choice or choice or choose from a list now again we need to go off to a page now that we've produced this and so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna not go off to a page where there's any more questions but just goes off to a page where there is some feedback and statistics or information about uh, what the person's answer is so of course this is another way that we could work with this this system in other words the students answer a question and then they get sent to a page depending on uh, the answer that they've given that then provides them with some additional information so let's try and develop those extra pages now now as we know we need to create the additional pages that these are going to go to so I'm going to now add the item so I'm going to click on add item 
and I'm going to create a page break and this is going to be whatever page it is um, so if we come here at the moment we've just added the item and uh, we're going to put it here we can always move the pages around afterwards it's not a problem anyway so we're going to put here Mumbai stats we're not going to add in any question we don't need to and we're just going to say yes the city population is around 18 million sorry and the surrounding area has another 20 million people and simply add that now again I'm going to click on done now I'm not going to go through the other pages uh, and so what I just want to come back to now is if we come back to so we've added that page we've not added a question to that page this page 5 and what we're going to do now is come back and edit the question on uh, India which at the moment now has three pages remember so we're going to come back three questions sorry we're going to come back to that one here click on edit and choose that if the user answers 18 million that they move to Mumbai stats now I could of course do two other pages here I'm not going to do that now just because I want you to see what the result is and I'm going to now click on live form and we've got the video we're going to choose India of course going to click on continue and then we've got three questions so the first one the answer is Delhi the second one the answer is West India and then the third one the answer is 18 million now let's just click on this button continue because it will continue and move hopefully to the page where we've now got the statistics uh, about what and there it is um, yes the population is around 18 million blah 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 submit and we can submit all that information uh, to the form and we'll have a quick look at that in a minute as well now of course we can view the responses and we've we've obviously got just one response so far if we click here I think we can view responses or you can do the same here um, I think the nice one as well is summary of responses let's just have a quick check because I can never remember which one's which so there we are we got the answer the student put um, India as their first response this obviously didn't answer that, that second and third question because it didn't go there did it they went straight to the Indian one they chose Delhi as the capital they chose West India as their um, where the re region was and they then chose uh, 18 million as the estimation of the population and then they were taken to the Mumbai stats because of that so you can see exactly what happens and you can see that all the information is tracked and that is the power of working with um, uh, Google Forms and what I really like is just how flexible it is to create the questions now I'm going to look in some more elements now but hopefully I've made the working with um, the video and then building questions around it and of course you can add more videos as well you're not limited to one video hopefully you could work on what I've now showed you and develop that a little bit further um, let's move on to some other uh, things that I want to look at now an additional feature um, of working with Google Forms that you might find interesting is that you can actually link Google Forms uh, to a spreadsheet so that you can actually view the information in, in another way now in most cases you probably won't want to do this um, but if you are asking a lot of complex information and you want to gather that information very quickly then it might be useful let me just give you um, an example of how it would work if you're at the moment it says choose response destination now we can view very easily a summary of the responses okay so I can look here and we've already sh showed you that and we can see the responses themselves so we've always got that option if we want to look at a summary of the responses but we can also choose response destination and what I can do is I can choose uh, if I want to here always create a spreadsheet or a new spreadsheet in uh, if I want to and this will mean that not only will the information come into responses but it will then be added to a spreadsheet as well Now you don't have to make that link I'm gonna I'm going to do, just do it for this one. If I want to do this, I can just make sure that uh, I only keep the forms, the responses in forms, and, and it doesn't add this additional layer of, of, of kind of.
basically summarizing the information but in this particular case I'm going to click on this and show you what would happen so it now has created a spreadsheet if I went back to my Google Drive I should see now that I've got a second here um, notice now that this is instead of just having video form activity I've now got an actual spreadsheet with that information here in it and I'm going to click on that okay and it will actually now put that information into a spreadsheet now it's not necessarily that useful because in this particular case um, the information that we were gathering it tells me when it was done and the answers to the questions and I can go through and see what the user puts okay as you can see if you were adding in email addresses etc etc then it could be really useful to have that because then you can obviously copy those email addresses very quickly it would depend on the type of information you were trying to gather but you can link your forms to a spreadsheet and it simply offers you another way of viewing your information now if you want to turn off the spreadsheet I think it's click on responses and just click on unlink form and this will stop your form adding the data into a spreadsheet so I'm going to click on that button there and unlink and the two will be unlink there won't be a link now between um, the form and the spreadsheet um, you may find that it still resides in your Gmail because of course I had it set to yes I'm not sure if it will disappear or whether it will still be there let's have a look uh, it looks like it's still there so I'm going to delete those as well now okay so just keep that in mind that you can if you want to link um, a form to a spreadsheet and then that means that the data will not only be in the form view but will be also in a spreadsheet view as well okay I hope you found those videos useful please come to teachertrainingvideos.com and make use of other videos you can sign up to the newsletter here just if you don't want to just close the window down you've got loads of different videos for blogging and wikis and Edmodo and Moodle and how to screencast you can always search for a particular tool by just simply doing a search here and it will bring up the relevant videos uh, that you might be looking for you'll also notice that you can do online courses with me these on con online courses are paid all the videos are for free but if you want to do online courses there are normally two types some of them are just short workshops and they normally cost between twenty and thirty dollars and then there are longer courses for tools like Moodle and Camtasia one final thing is you can also buy Camtasia for me we are a registered reseller of Camtasia and we do it at an educational price uh, of hundred and seventy dollars which I think you'll probably find is one of the cheapest prices on the internet anyway please make use of the website it's all free all the videos are free and they're there for you to learn about different technologies that you can use in your teaching and learning